There's more to Code Pipeline than just building and deploying. In this module, we're going to look at some of the more advanced features of Code Pipeline. We'll start in this clip by looking at how to invoke lambdas and interact with a pipeline in that lambda function. In the next clip, we'll look at how to disable and enable stage transitions. Then we'll see how you can monitor changes in your pipeline with CloudWatch events. And finally, we'll see how you can configure automated notifications in Code Pipeline. Emma's team was happy with the progress they had made. They had completed a pipeline created to build, test, and deploy the new HBFL interface. It was already saving the team a ton of time. But then, one of Emma's team members, Sam, raised a concern. What if the team needed to do more in the future? Building, testing, deploying, is that all Code Pipeline is good for? What if they needed more advanced logic on when to start a pipeline? What if they needed to fetch data from an API during a pipeline execution? What if, what if, what if? Sam went on and on. Emma stopped him before he tore all his hair out and told him about invoking lambdas from Code Pipeline. You can do almost anything in a lambda function, and Code Pipeline has a built in action specifically for invoking lambdas. So let's take a look at how lambda invocations work with Code Pipeline. Code Pipeline comes with an AWS Lambda invocation action type. With this, you can invoke a lambda directly from Code Pipeline. When you invoke that lambda, in the action, you can define a couple of configuration options, such as input artifacts and user parameters, which allow you to pass in pre-configured string data. Inside the lambda, you'll be able to pull these inputs out of the event object that's passed into your lambda function handler. Once inside the function code, you can do whatever you want, but to actually report back to the pipeline execution and continue, you'll need to use an AWS SDK code pipeline object. A few of the functions that you may be interested in are put job success result, which will mark the Lambda invocation action as a success and continue the pipeline execution. You can also use put job failure result, to mark the invocation action as a failure and stop a pipeline execution. Other useful functions are start pipeline execution, which lets you kick off a code pipeline execution, and get pipeline state, which tells you what a pipeline is doing, including the state of each stage and action. When you're invoking a Lambda from code pipeline, it really opens up your options to do almost anything. For our demo pipeline, we're going to create a basic Lambda function that does nothing and just demonstrates how to interact with Code Pipeline. First, we need to create our Lambda function, so go to the Lambda dashboard in the AWS console. Click the Create Function button. Let's name the function hbfl-cp. Select node 12.x for the runtime, and then click Create Function. Lambda functions can be invoked by Code Pipeline with no change in permissions. But when Lambda is invoked by a pipeline, an important final step is for the Lambda function to notify the pipeline execution of a success or failure so that it can continue. To do this, the Lambda function does need permissions to access Code Pipeline. We'll need to add a policy to the service role used by the Lambda function. Scroll down to the Execution Role section. There's a link that will take us to that role in the IAM console at the bottom, so click that. Now we just need to attach a policy, so click Attach Policies. In the search input, type Code Pipeline. Now, in a production scenario, it would be best to only give this Lambda access to the pipeline it is being invoked from. But for this demo, we'll give it full access. Select AWS Code Pipeline Full Access, and then click Attach Policy. Now the Lambda will have permissions to report back to Code Pipeline, so go back to the Lambda Function tab. Scroll up to the Function Code section with the In Browser Editor. Now we'll implement the Lambda function. First we need to change the handler function signature a bit. Remove the async keyword before the function. Then add another argument after event, called context. We'll use this context argument to manage the function execution since the AWS SDK uses the callback pattern. Now, when this lambda is invoked, 
there's going to be important data on the event object that's passed into the handler. Let's take a look at the structure of what's there. On the event object, there's a code pipeline.job property with all the information from the current execution that invoked the Lambda function. The properties on that object are the ID, which refers to the current pipeline execution, the account ID, where the pipeline resides, and then any data passed into the Lambda from the action. That data object contains the configuration details about the invocation action in the pipeline, the location in S3 of the input and output artifacts, and artifact session information, including keys and tokens to access the artifacts from S3. Back in our code, first we need to import the AWS SDK. At the top, declare a const with the identifier AWS in all caps. Then assign to it a require function call with the string AWS SDK as its argument. The AWS SDK is included with all lambdas, so we don't need to install this dependency. Next, inside the handler function, we need to instantiate a new code pipeline instance. Declare another const variable with the identifier CP. Assign to it a new AWS code pipeline function call. Now we need to get the ID of the job that invoked this lambda. We'll do this so that we can report back to the correct pipeline execution in case that this lambda is being called by multiple executions at the same time. Declare a new const with the identifier job ID. Assign to it the value event, then open square brackets and quotes and enter code pipeline dot job inside the quotes. Then close the quotes and square brackets and then add dot ID. This is how you can get this job ID off of the event object. On the next line, we're going to make a function call on the CP object. Call cp.putJobSuccessResult. The first argument will be an object literal. You can give it one property, job ID. Then for the next argument, add a function with error and data arguments. This will be the callback after the pipeline execution has been notified of the success result from this action. If there is an error object, then call context.fail else call context.succeed. These calls to context define how and when the Lambda function ends its execution as a failure or success. The way the Lambda stops executing does not matter to the pipeline execution. It doesn't even know that the Lambda function has completed. Only the job result that is put matters. And that's all we need to do for this Lambda function. Click the Save button in the top right. Now go to the code pipeline dashboard and select your HBFL pipeline. We're going to add this invocation right before the build action. Click the edit button. And then on the build stage, click edit stage. Now click the add action group button above the build action. For the action name, let's call it Lambda. In the action provider dropdown, look for the invoke group and select AWS Lambda. In the function name input field, select the hbfl-cp function. Now click done. And then click done on the stage, and then save, and save. Now we need to kick off the pipeline again, so click release change, and then release. Now you can watch the pipeline and see that it invokes the Lambda function and marks it as a success. If we were to do something more substantial with our Lambda, we could check the result. But for our purposes, a successful result is just what we're looking for.